Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. Nebraska has not been to a bowl game since 2016. Let that sink in. One of college football's blue bloods has not been to a bowl game since 2016, but Matt Rule is hoping to change that in year one. Corn Huskers, guys, we know, have gone through a very rough stretch of football over these last six, seven seasons. Matt Rule, a guy who transformed Temple, a guy who transformed Baylor into contenders, a guy who didn't pan out very well in the NFL, but that's okay. We've sh he's shown that he can be a program builder, is now coming to Lincoln to try to make the Corn Huskers a contender again in the Big Ten. And we are here today to break down Nebraska's schedule for this upcoming college football season to see if he can do just that in year one. So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys. We're so glad that you could join us today. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, check out everything down in the description below because we have so much exclusive content over there for you guys to get through this offseason. Because let me tell you something. Here at the Gridiron Expert, football never dies. Football never dies. It never ends. The season's always going on right here at the Gridiron Expert. We want you to take advantage of that. We want you to be a part of that. We want you to become a part of our GE Nation so you can talk college football with us year round. So let's take a look at Nebraska, right? This is a team that, again, no bowls since 2016. Another heartbreaking, frustrating 4-8 season in 2022. A 4-8 season that easily could have been so much better because Nebraska had five one-possession losses. Five losses by one possession. They just win three of those. They have a seven-win season, a decent bowl game, and maybe Scott Frost is still on the sideline. 31-28 loss to Northwestern. 45-42 home loss to Georgia Southern. 15-14 one-point loss to Wisconsin. But they did carry a little momentum into this year, finishing the year with a 24-17 win over Iowa. So that was a little bit of a momentum builder heading into the Matt Rule era. You take a look at Nebraska's schedule to kind of see what they can do in 2023. The first thing I like to look at for every team is who are their cross-division games? Who does Nebraska have to play from the Big Ten East? Well, they unfortunately draw Michigan arguably the best team in the Big Ten East. They draw Maryland, who's improving under Mike Loxley, and they draw Michigan State. Michigan State, so-so. They do avoid Ohio State, though, and they do avoid Penn State. The top three teams in the East are Michigan, Ohio State, and Penn State. They avoid two of those, so that certainly is a, a plus for Nebraska. You take a look. Uh, the one thing I don't like for Nebraska is that their first two games are on the road. So Nebraska fans will not get to really welcome Matt Rule, get to watch him in person at uh, at Memorial Stadium at Lincoln uh, until week three when they host Northern Illinois. So they have to go on the road to Minnesota, on the road to Colorado. And if I'm Nebraska, I'm hoping that I at least split those two games. Uh, the Minnesota game will be tough. That was another one possession loss last year. The Cornhuskers lost 20-13 to to the Golden Gophers, uh, but obviously a team that, you know, is it, it, losing a lot from last year. P.J. Flight, usually around an 8-9 win team. The defense is going to be the biggest thing. So can Matt Rule generate enough offense to exploit this Minnesota defense. That's the storyline there. Second week, on the road at Colorado. It's the Deion Sanders show. How well will all Deion Sanders transfers pan out so early on in the year? That's a very winnable game for Nebraska. Colorado has a lot of talent. They have a lot of high expectations. And finally, have excitement surrounding that football program. But from a coaching standpoint, Matt Rule owns the edge. To me, Matt Rule is the better coach than Deion Sanders. He's more proven, certainly, right now than Deion Sanders. But can that translate to a victory in Boulder? That is going to be key. So I really think for Nebraska to get people kind of excited and, and breathing a little bit easy, Nebraska probably needs to find a way to be 1-1. One one. Because if they can do that after those first two road games, they could easily be 3-1 and one heading into conference play. I think most people would expect them to beat Northern Illinois and Louisiana Tech. And again, we're not here to predict games today. That's going to come here in a few months when we predict every single college football team's record. But again, those first four games... If Nebraska can win at least three of them, they're looking pretty good heading into conference play. You get into conference play, and it, it's pretty tough. I mean, when you really, really look at it, and I don't know if there's really one key stretch that we can point to, but we'll just kind of go through each game here. I mean, you start with Michigan, a national uh, playoff semifinalist last year where they fell to TCU, ran the table in the Big Ten, perfect 13-0 before taking their first loss to TCU. Nebraska lost to the Wolverines 34-3. So you'd have to see a 31-point turnaround against a Michigan team that returns tons on defense, returns their quarterback in J.J. McCarthy, returns their uh, running back in Blake Corum, a Michigan team that's basically loaded and ready to run to the playoff once again. So that's a tough game for Nebraska, but they do get to host them. 
On the road to Illinois, they lost to the Fighting Illini 26-9 last year. Illinois losing a lot as well, including their star defensive coordinator and Ryan Walters, who will be coaching at Purdue. But playing in Champaign is not easy. Brett Bielema has transformed that program. They're no longer a laughing stock in the Big Ten. So playing on the road is going to be tough. Uh, and they lost by 17 again at home last year to the Fighting Illini. They get their bye week. And I think they get two games at home that are very, very winnable for Nebraska. And that's kind of a breath of fresh air, right? They played Northwestern, who they did lose to last year, 31-28 to over in Ireland. Uh, but this is a Northwestern team that, again, under Pat Fitzgerald, I never want to count them out, but has really disappointed these last few years. And, and you can't help but wonder. Everybody says, oh, Pat Fitzgerald has one bad year. He's going to rebound with a good year. That wasn't the case last year. Northwestern was terrible again last year. I don't know if he's going to be able to right the ship in 2023 at home off a week of rest would be a great recipe for Nebraska to get a win, especially if they drop maybe two in a row to Michigan and Illinois. Purdue only fell to Purdue 43-37 to last year, another one of those one-possession losses that we mentioned. But now Purdue, yes, they landed Hudson Card, the transfer quarterback from Texas, but Aiden O'Connell's gone. I'd take Aiden O'Connell over Hudson Card right now. Ryan Walters is the new head coach at Purdue, so the Illinois defensive coordinator last year that held Nebraska to nine points. is now the head coach at Purdue. So I would expect a pretty solid Boilermakers defense, no doubt about it, but could they come on the road and take down Nebraska? One thing you're going to have to watch out for this year is obviously how quickly can Matt Rule transform the Nebraska offense? One that was so erratic at times, one that really didn't have much of a true identity, one that could certainly run the ball extremely well, but how well can Matt Rule transform the offense to where it can compete and put up some points against some of the more elite defenses in the Big Ten, like a Michigan, like an Illinois, maybe like a Purdue this year. That's something that we really need to watch. Wisconsin, that's something that we need to kind of watch out for. That's an interesting storyline to watch, and will kind of play a major role in the type of success and the type of season that Nebraska can have. So you get past Purdue. At Michigan State, there's one of your East teams there. Uh, again, they didn't play Michigan State last year, but the Spartans were a major disappointment in 2022 after a rough go around, or after a very successful go around in 2021. So playing that game in East Lansing, could be a, a you know a 50-50 game for me because if Nebraska is riding a high, if Nebraska has won two straight games, they're feeling good and they've got five wins, six wins heading into this Michigan State game, I could see them beating the Spartans in East Lansing. It's really going to come down to what Mel Tucker is able to generate after a disappointing year. They host Maryland. Obviously a team out of the East they did not play last year either. Maryland's a team that is starting to find their stride under Mike Loxley. Finally got to, uh, back to another bowl game this last year. Has looked very solid over these last few seasons under Loxley. Uh, but Nebraska getting to host them at home. So you know this, this month of November is going to be so key because all those games in the month of November are winnable. So if Nebraska comes into the final month with four wins, five wins, something like that, where they're right on the fringe of bowl eligibility, all they're going to need is just one or two wins in the month of November to get to bowl eligibility for the first time since 2016. Two games at home, two games on the road, but really no world beaters there. I would make the argument that the toughest game in the month of November is the road game at Wisconsin. Yeah, because Wisconsin, obviously hiring Luke Fickle, finally has a great quarterback in Tanner Mordecai, has one of the best running backs in the conference in Braylon Allen, expected to have another stout defense. It's on the road in Madison. That's the toughest game in the month of November. The other three, I would not be shocked to see Nebraska win. And so that's something to watch out for here. If Nebraska is bowl eligible or looking to be bowl eligible heading into November, there's a very good chance they're going to clinch it against one of those four opponents or one, two of those four opponents. So the Wisconsin game, they only lost two by one last year, 15 to 14. New look, Nebraska, new look, Wisconsin. That's going to be a fun game. And of course, the rivalry game against Iowa. Look, Iowa's offense might get a little bit of a boost from Cade McNamara, but I'm not saying he's going to be the world beater. I don't think he's going to be the biggest answer for the Hawkeyes. Hawkeyes are still going to be good. But Nebraska beat Iowa 24-17 at Kinnick last year. Now they get to host them in Lincoln. Rivalry game, Nebraska's always up for Iowa. Matt Rule's first game against Iowa. It's senior night. It's at home. Could be for a spot in a bowl game. Could be for just improving a bowl game. Who knows what it's going to be. But the stakes are going to be high because it always is between Iowa and Nebraska. And the Cornhuskers were able to win last year with that team in Kinnick. I wouldn't be surprised to see him win at home against Iowa now. It's a very winnable game and could have a major role in who wins the Big Ten West because Nebraska might not be contending for that division title, but Iowa could, and the Cornhuskers certainly could be playing spoiler. All in all, guys, you know, I think the first half of the schedule is certainly more difficult for Nebraska than the back half. Uh, obviously, if you look at those first six games, uh, half of them are on the road, at Minnesota, at Colorado, at Illinois, and then you have a home game against Michigan in there, which is going to be very, very difficult. So the first half of the season – Absolutely brutal. Then you get that bye week right at the midway point. Back half, very, very favorable, where you get to have four of your final six at home 
And all four that we just mentioned are extremely winnable. And even that road game at Michigan State, I wouldn't say it's going to be that difficult. So Nebraska has an opportunity to get to their first bowl game since 2016. I believe they do have the talent for it. And I certainly believe they have the coach for it. I'm not saying that Nebraska is a Big Ten title contender this year by any means. But I do think you're going to see a much better looking football team, a much more competitive football team. And some of those one possession losses that Nebraska had will soon turn in to wins in 2023. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, check out everything down in the description below. Because again, here at the Gridiron Expert, football never dies. The season never ends here at the Gridiron Expert. We want you to become a part of that, become a part of our GE Nation. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert. Yeah!